So a long debated topic of Blender is basically where the hotkeys come into the equation. But my argument isn't just that hotkeys make you faster, they actually make you a better artist. Because that extra time doesn't just result in breaks after you're done. It means you're gonna go back and fix things and spend the extra time to get things right. First things first, I don't have the default Blender setup. So here are some of my settings if you wanna follow along and get all the hotkeys that I'm using in addition to the ones that Blender starts you off with. My mantra is maximize the viewport and hide the buttons. This keeps you focused on what you're working on, it reduces eye strain, and it forces you to get into the habit of using all the hotkeys that are gonna make you so much faster in the long run. All these startup files and preferences can be found in the download links below, as well as a readme file that explains everything that I'm saying in writing. Let's get started with the hotkeys. I'm gonna start with the most commonly used and fundamental ones and move on to the more obscure ones, which might not be used as much, but can still be extremely powerful. Okay, so first things first, you're gonna notice that I'm in a complete full screen mode. You can toggle this with option F11. Uh, moving right into the one hotkey you're gonna use a lot is tab. It uh, toggles between edit and object mode. So it's a great way to just get back and forth. Uh, sometimes just viewing your object without the lines is a really huge help. Um, a, once you're in object mode or edit mode, will select all or nothing, and it'll toggle between that. So if you're selected on something, it'll go to nothing. And if you're on nothing, it'll select everything. Probably the base of all hotkeys is G. And this stands for grab. It's your main kind of movement translation tool. Uh, if you hit it once, it'll start to move, and by default, it's going to move based on the angle that you're looking at it from. So thinking of the screen as sort of like an X and Y axis, moving on those two axes from, from your angle. If you hit G twice, uh, in some cases, you get the ability to slide a component along an edge. So like a vertice or an edge, based on the other edges that it's connected to, it'll slide along that, which can be really helpful for keeping... Uh, faces flat. Another cool way to translate things is using the right mouse button. And it's kind of a tricky thing to get used to, but basically you can you can right click drag in a really fast movement and then Blender will understand that you're trying to you're trying to move it. This can be a really really fast way to move things if um, if you're on top of it. One situation that's really great for it is with UV islands. So you have a lot of UV islands and you're trying to move them in quickly. You can just right click drag, right click drag, um, and then left click, you know, to, to release. One of the cool things about grab is there's a lot of different modifiers you can place on top of it. So if you hit G and you're already moving it around, you can hit X or Y or Z to, to move it on just that axis. So maybe you want to move something up, then you just hit grab what you want, hit G and then hit Z and then you can drag it straight up and you don't have to worry about moving it on the X or Y axis. Uh, at the same time, you can also hit Shift Z or Shift X or Shift Y to con to ignore that axis. So, say you want to move something horizontally and you don't want to move it up or down at all, um, such as like maybe some foot vertices. Then you'd grab a selection and then hit Shift Z, and then you'd be able to kind of just move it on 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 two axes, constraining the one. Another thing that's really huge with using Grab is uh, toggling snap, so shift tab is going to turn that on, toggling it on and off. Uh, basically, that gives you the ability to, if you want to align some vertices, you can shift tab to toggle that on and then hover your mouse over a vertice while you're dragging. This comes in especially useful when you're using the constraint axes. So, you know, you hit G, then X, and then shift tab, and then you hover over a vertex that you want to be aligned on the X axis, and then it's, and then it's solid. Another huge level to thinking about this is the orientation. So by default, your handlers are gonna be on global orientation, but there's a couple more options. The main three that I like to think of are global, local, and normal. So global is the default. You know, Y uh, and X are kind of your <clears throat> uh, sort of plane that you're on, and then Z is up. So they're always gonna point in those directions with global. But if you hit option spacebar, you can switch to normal orientation. And this will change your axes. And not only does this change the way the manipulators are facing. So you can see when I'm in normal orientation, it'll check which face, which, which direction the face is pointing. 
and it'll align the arrows that way with Z pointing outwards from where the face is, is pointing. This can be really useful if you're working on an angle or you have some sort of surface that you want to maintain uh, being flat, but it's not in the uh, Z or X or Y direction in a clean uh, way. It's like 45 degrees between or something like that. And you can see that you can also grab a bunch of faces and then scale them all to get that to work too. Okay, so rotate uh, is R and hitting uh, R will start to rotate it, sort of like grab, based on the angle that you're looking at it from. And keep in mind, this is sort of a, a basic token of Blender where the default movement is based on the angle that you're viewing it from, which means if you're orbiting around, you can kind of get an intuitive sense for how it's going to be moving and, and rotating. So just by orbiting and then hitting G or R, you can often get the kind of um, change to your mesh that you're looking for. And then hitting R twice gives you a kind of a different tool where it's rotating on a trackball where you're, you're kind of getting a third dimension sort of rotation where you're, you can kind of rotate it <clears throat> away from yourself or towards yourself in sort of a clockwise kind of way. And one thing to keep in mind with rotate, a lot of times rotations are really based upon where your pivot point is. So uh, this is where I like to look, go into to think about the different pivot types. So we, all went, we already went into the orientation types. That's option spacebar. But pivot types are sort of where you're angling all your transformations from. For rotation, you know, say you wanted to rotate an arm, you wouldn't want to rotate an arm from the center of mass of the arm because that would come around somewhere at the elbow. You might want to rotate the arm from where it's connected at the, at the shoulder. So in order to do this, we would hit the period key to switch to cursor um, pivot type. Basically what that means is you can place this sort of uh, three-dimensional point wherever you want and then set that as the manipulation type. So if we hit period and then we, we left click anywhere on the screen, it's gonna put this little uh, sort of cross axis with a circle and that'll represent that. And you can see the manipulator switch to that as soon as we hit period. Now, if we wanna get the period in a special place where it's not just, we're not just um, touching with left click, but we actually want to set it to somewhere like completely um, set, then we can um, grab some sort of selection and then use shift S to bring up the cursor options. And one of my favorite cursor options is snap cursor to selection. So shift S and then snap cursor to selection. Now we can rotate from that pivot if we hit period. And, and to keep in mind the default Pivot type is control comma, which is just the, the median point. Basically, you take all the points that you're selected and average their position and you put the, you put the pivot in the center of that, which overall uh, makes the most sense by default. Another type of pivot worth thinking about is control period. What that does is it actually um, puts a separate pivot per element selected. So say you have maybe a bunch of finger faces and you decide, oh, you know, that the tips of the fingers are all too fat. I want to scale them all by the same amount. Now, usually if you scaled with control com, which is the default pivot type, they're going to all kind of slant in towards each other because you're scaling between the four fingers. But if you use control period, it'll scale each of these faces on their own pivot um, respectively. So this can be really powerful when you're dealing with duplicates or multiple objects that you want to apply similar uh, transformations to. Which brings me uh, to my next sort of modifier for these sort of operations is you can also enter numbers while you're uh, conducting the transformation. So for example, if you wanted to rotate something by 90 degrees, it's very easy. You just hit R, then you maybe use the X axis, so you hit X and then you type in 90 and then enter and then it'll rotate that by 90 degrees based on your pivot type. Another thing that's important, so all these transformations uh, get a huge uh, boon based on what perspective you're looking at it from. And that's why I really encourage people to orbit around your object as much as possible. But one powerful, really powerful tool that I've added to Blender uh, is Shift Z. And what this does, it's a new hotkey for centering the view to where you put the cursor. And this special kind of uh, focus for the, for the view camera allows you to orbit perfectly uh, around whatever you're looking at, 
which also um, transfers to whichever view you're looking at it from. So whether you're hitting one or three or seven, uh, which are the you know front, side, and top views, um, it'll maintain that camera pivot and that focus, which makes it really, really great for making slight adjustments and making sure that you can make those adjustments where you're automatically ignoring certain axes. Um, also worth noting is I do have the setting for uh, the, the numbers to numpad, which basically means that my top numbers count as that. So uh, when you hit one, three, and seven, it'll go to those views. Also five is a key to toggle orthographic mode. I actually tend to prefer orthographic uh, pivoting or sort of or orthographic orbit because I think it helps the object not be warped and is more understandable for seeing things that are going wrong. And scale is S. It just takes your selection and makes it bigger or smaller based on uh, what your pivot is. Another way um, to sort of fine tune this, because sometimes you want to make a very slight adjustment and for whatever reason, it's, it's really difficult to get those, those fine details. If you hold down shift during any transformation, it'll slow down the, the rate at which you're moving your mouse will, will affect the, um, the transformation. So if you hold down shift, we get that very slight adjustment, which we can use to really fine tune the changes that we want. Another type of scaling is option S. And what that does is it scales along the normals. This is a great way, thinking of it as making fatter or thinner. Say you, you have um, uh, a finger that's like a little bit too fat. If you used option S, it would scale all those faces based on their normals. And um, it would kind of shrink it in or, or make it fatter based on which direction you go with it. Now that we've got the transformations out of the way, let's move on to all the hotkeys that you're gonna be using in addition to all the main transformations.